In this video, I will provide you with a few examples on how you can build a hip roof cathedral ceiling room addition and attach it to another hip roof cathedral ceiling. So the hip roof needs to be supported, remember, and I'm going to try and make a couple of videos. I'll put some links around here to them throughout the video and at the end of the video um, for some more information. It's hard to put everything into one of these videos and sometimes they get a little long. So this is the hip roof. I'm going to put a link to where uh, give you a little more information about this type of hip roof uh, cathedral ceiling construction. Cathedral ceiling or vaulted ceiling. There's the addition and the addition has um, support footings and this is something you're going to need. I kind of drew them in. You're going to need support footings where the weight needs to transfer down to some type of a beam and then through some posts and into the concrete footing. So this ought to give you an idea. It's not just going to be a regular concrete footing all the time on the addition and uh, on the home also give you an idea. Um, these are just uh, extra footings to, pro to provide uh, a better transfer for the load that is being uh, supported by the beam and of course the roof. Okay, here's the addition attached. The ridge beam will be attached. Now this, we are using beams for the hips and we'll be using them for the valleys and for the ridge and for the support. So this is just one type of system you could run into, one type of framing method. So I'm just kind of left the addition alone here with the wall intact and the addition here. Just kind of throwing some stuff out there. Another view. The ridge beam might, might need to notch around the um, hips and the other ridge, but it all depends on which way you are going to build it. All depends on where this beam and support is located. I have this back a little bit. I took and laid out the rafters and then I moved the beam back a little bit. Your post might be moved over and directly underneath the ridge, but again, this area here could be all framed differently. So again, one method right here. Let's go ahead and remove some of the rafters. I removed the hip and some of the rafters to give you a better idea of how the beam and the post is supporting the ridge and the hips. And this is a concentrated load transferring to the wall or through a post and a beam here. And of course the wall will need to be removed or modified. Now for a room addition like this, you could always leave this and just um, you know, leave the support section and come in and remove a couple of studs and then have an opening in here. Um, and that this would be the easiest way to do something like this if you're using this type of framing. But uh, if you are going to use a beam and you want it to be above the ceiling, then it will need to look something like this. And it will be supporting the post midway. So here we actually have two supports, a support here a support here and a support here for this particular ridge. Give you another view of it here. The beam is sitting on top of the post here and uh, it looks like we have about four two by fours on the other side and a hanger. You will need a hanger for something like this to connect the existing beam to the new beam. And there's a very good chance that the new beam here is going to be a little larger than this one because it's going to be because it's going to be supporting a lot more weight. And here's the four studs here. Not uncommon to have four studs something like this instead of a post, all depending upon the framing again. Let's go ahead and put a valley in there with some fill rafters, uh, jack rafters. And you can see here that we have a new valley and a few rafters on the other side. We have removed the hip on this side. You can actually fill this area in, but uh, cathedral ceilings usually look a lot better if they uh, don't have uh, a lot of stuff, I guess, in the ceiling. If you left the hip in here, you would need to drywall around the ceiling 
or around the hip and that might not look very nice. Again, it all depends on what uh, look you're actually looking for and what will work. So another view of it here, the valley is connecting to the ridge support beams and it's actually not sitting on top of the walls. It's going to be need to be bolted or somehow attached to the um, to this particular support beam. And again, this is one way the beam is the beam is on top of the walls in the next uh, section or the next uh, part of the video, it will be underneath. Uh, again, trying to provide you with a few more ideas. Uh, hips, hips, ridge, one hip. We got rid of this hip. And then we have another ridge with a hip. And here is the addition right here. That's just giving you an idea how the valley beam would need to need to connect to the ridge beams. A couple of jack rafters or fill rafters. And again, you can see right here where there is nothing underneath the valley. It will need to be connected to the beam. And the reason why I'm providing you with this is, you know, a lot of times people go in and they draw something. I think this is going to be easier or they don't even think about it. And by looking at these videos, you can actually say, you know what? I'm not going to use this particular method. I'm going to use the next one. And again, it just depends upon what type of look you're trying to um, trying to find on the inside. So here we have the beam with the hanger connected to another beam. In the next one, we will have the beam will be sitting on top of the beam and this beam will be dropped down. Top of the beam will be even with the top of the wall framing. Here we go, the roof, we have the beam here, the underneath the other beam supporting it. And uh, taking another tour here, the valley of course will need to be cut a little different because now the valley is sitting on top of the wall or the beam. So here we can see that the beam here is transferring the load to this beam here along with the support post, post here that is taking some of the weight off of this ridge beam and then transferring it to both sides of the building. And again, something like this, the way I have this right now, might need a larger footing here. We don't have the larger footing. It's not right here. So uh, if you are going to be building something like this, uh, again, this will be a concern. Wherever you have a concentrated load, you might need a different type of footing or a larger footing. Same view on the top. Same view here. Only thing that's going to be different will be down here where we're going to have the valley sitting on top of the wall and the beam. Good view of it there. Pull back. Here we can see where the beam is sitting on top of the other beam. And then of course transferring the load to a couple of four by fours uh, or one four by four on each side. This thing right here, this type of framing is probably going to be a little easier to build than the um, beam into the ceiling. So uh, again, this just might be a different, just another thing to consider. So anyway, that is it for this video. I am going to make a few other videos for hip roof, cathedral ceiling types of uh, designs and put them in a different, put them in some different spots. You know, I'm going to take and move this addition over, put it in the middle somewhere, give you an idea how that would look and uh, try to make a couple of different videos on the different types of framing for cathedral. You know, I use some some beams, uh, four by 12s, I believe, for the ridge and the hips and valleys. And uh, another method might be where you use double two by 12s or even a single two by 12, depending upon the span. So try and uh, create some more videos on that and we'll attach some links. Don't forget to visit the web website. The website is where eventually all of the links will be organized. All the videos will be organized to make it easier for you to find them. So anyway, that's it for this video and it is off to the next one.